In this episode, we will show you how to make a romantic style painting by looking closely at the work of Barend Koekoek. Okay, let's start. It's gonna be a romantic painting. So first I'm gonna start with the light on the background. First I'm gonna be using sort of the yellowish brown. Make sure to check out the reference. It's in the description below. Big strokes, it's just to have the first layer. A sort of golden light, golden light in the morning. Koekoek was a romantic painter, but he invented his landscape. So he didn't go and sit somewhere and copy exact, exactly the landscape he saw. But what he did, he went there in the morning or in the evening and he started making little oil sketches. And when he was in his studio, he combined all those sketches. So all his landscapes, like this one also, they don't exist. Okay, now we, I want to do the pink because in the, at the horizon, the sun is glooming and firing the landscape, so we take another brush, again a thick one, big one, now we're going to do the pink part, a bit of red, like this for instance, let's see, oh it's too much, too much, but, but it doesn't matter because after this I'm going to make it more light. Mm -hmm. So, a bit of white to make it more pink. Uh, pink. Uh, okay. Smoothening it up a bit. So I get rid of the brush strokes a bit. So when he paints a landscape like this, you start in a sort of abstract way. And you do that with a big soft brush. And now and then you clean and clean it up. Um, now I want to have the thing in front, and that's green. Bit of juice. The foreground. Bit of the lighter green. So, and you see you already get a sort of landscape with a horizon. Brush strokes disappear. You see, and every time I clean my brush. Don't push too hard. Now, what we see here, the background, because that's uh, there are little mountains over here in the pink parts. So, that's totally in the background, so we start with that. And we use the yellowish Brown again. Here's a mountain. So I worked a little bit more on the background to uh, to tone up and make it a bit lighter because the the, eh, the the sun is coming up on this side. You see this brownish bushes. So in the background. That's what I'm gonna do yet next. And I'm gonna use a sort of reddish brown for that. And you can choose whatever you want, a couple more to or whatever, as you like. Don't care about uh, the shape of things or whatever. So just uh, use your brush. 
all of a sudden I see a tree. Zzzzup. There it comes. And another tree. Ooh, like this. So now we're going up. Up, 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 up. Little branches over here, over there. Uh, just watch very much what's on the end of the tree. The, the tree tips at the end. Because there they touch the sky and there they become leaves all of a sudden. So let's try out. You see? Up, 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 up. Kukuk was very accurate. And he looked very carefully on all those tiny leaves. But um, we don't have enough time for that, so it's going to be less accurate. But when you're at home, you can take as long as you want to paint the leaves and that sort of thing. You can invent trees, yeah? it doesn't matter, because that's what Kukuk also did. He invented the landscape, so use your imagination. Now we're going over there because we saved the, the, the big oak tree for the last. Here's the light, so the, this will lit up, and this is more in the shade. So we use uh, an ombre for that. Let's do this first. That's so nice about painting. Whatever you do, there's always a shape or tree in it. So now I have uh, in the middle the, the brownish part. So we have the background, we have the foreground, and the green, and in the middle the brownish part. And now it's time to do the leaves. So I'm going to use green and I'm going to use uh, a darker green. It's called green earth for that at first. This is the green. And just tip it in the paint, in the wet paint. And you see there are all kinds of little leaves pop up. Kukuk uh, worked for months on one thing, so it's just to give you an idea how to do it. So I can continue with this making more leaves. This is a sort of idea of the leaves. Uh, I have to uh, be uh, more precise in them. So with another little brush, I will go over it. I'll do that later, but just to uh, move along, I'm gonna do the, the tree trunk. You see, I move my brush a little like this to get already a sort of bark texture in it. And you see one part of the branch is darker and here it's on the upper part and the lower part is lighter because the light comes from, it's in the morning so the light is low. With the ombre. And actually, you can invent things. If I want it to go this way, it's just, oh, okay. This way, this way, this way. This is the, the little nephew of the big oak. Now we're going to do the big oak again with the ombre. I'll, I'll save some pink in between, because that's kind of nice to have a sort of light in between. Now I'm going to do the lighter part of the tree, and I'm, so I'm going to use a lighter color. 
So I take a lighter brown, and that's the ochre, the ochre. I'm gonna make him bigger. It's gonna be a huge tree. Even bigger. Let's exaggerate, because we're in a romantic mood. Why not? Lighter. Brown, why not? Okay, to get more light in the tree, yeah, because the light chrome comes from the, the left, and I want this the sun sort of to fall on the, the tree trunk. So uh, what you can do, I can paint it lighter, but it's a, a far easier way is to wipe it away. So now I'm gonna sort of clay into the paint. And use your fingernail also. Because painting, you don't only use the brush, but a lot of the times you use your fingers also. And because there's light under it, and by pushing hard and soft, all kinds of colors reappear. Zap! Why not? And then you go back with the brush again. Just by playing around with your paint. Touching it light. But also a little hole in the bark. Enough for now for the for the trunk. I'm, I'm gonna detail it later on more, but now I'm more into doing little leaves around the tree to fill it up because here's a lot. I can't do them all, but just to show you what you can do. And for that, because I used here, I used a dark green, uh, green earth, and now I'm gonna make little leaves with a smaller brush and it I'm gonna do that with sap cream. Little leaves everywhere you want. A leaf here and there. But again, don't stop. <laughs> so keep a sort of air in between because you, eh, there's always sort of light comes through the leaves. So I use the lighter green, yellowish brown again because that's all because there's it's not only green, it's green and brown. And then you think, okay, I can do that also with the cloth again a bit. Of course, there's also branches in between. Okay, now what we're gonna do now, because then I'm, I'm gonna continue that later on and finish the whole thing around the, the, the tree, but now I'm gonna show you how you can paint bark. And I'm gonna use Van Dijk brown, or you can use Castle Earth. When you look carefully in the, in, the, in the woods, and that's what you should do also, because that's the great advice of uh, Mr. Kukuk. Just go into nature and keep on studying, because he was totally convinced that when you kept studying, you always keep on learning things. So he... You see, I do all kinds of little strokes here. So, and you make studies of all the details in nature. You see, it's incredibly how much inspiration you can get out of it by just looking and sketching and making drawings and making oil paintings outside.
you can continue on going uh, detailing in the bark and uh, putting a little light in, in it for now i'm um, i'm gonna do a bit of the the air and uh, the sky around it because uh, first i have to put the the sky in and the, after that i can put on top of the sky i can paint the leaves again so otherwise you have to paint the sky in between the leaves and that's a lot of work so we won't do that i use king blue because it's a majestic tree and i think it deserves a king blue sky the sky let's try it out here oh that's nice You see, I never go too hard with the brush, but just touch it. And sometimes you push a little harder and then a little bit softer. So you get this variation of the colors. The underlayer is still fat or, or covered with paint. So your paint mixes beautifully with the things behind it. Now the clouds. The clouds, and we take another brush and I'm gonna take a round brush so I'm gonna take this one because this is, is kind of nice I clean it first because there's still already red and the red is wet on the painting so I only use the titanium white to make the clouds pink Uh, because these are the lightest clouds. Okay, um, what Kukuk always were talking about that when you walk around in a landscape, you have to look for uh, what he's calling upholstery. Uh, so you use that up upholstery, but you use it mainly in the foreground and that's the idea of uh, of Kukuk that eh, look for in the landscape all around you for little details a little uh, like a trunk uh, of, of a tree or uh, a little plant or whatever so now to um, to show you how that works within your painting I'm gonna paint a little um, a little girl now let's put her over here here that's her arm that's the blouse here's her leg here's the other leg and she's coming towards us that's so nice to have a big painting and then use a brush with only a few hairs
Okay, I showed you all the techniques so you can finish your painting uh, yourself. I'm going to finish it also. Uh, and uh, that was it for now. Thank you very much, Ruud. See you next time. Bye.